The Kulinian region is one of the most resource-rich and culturally diverse areas in the country. Our mountains and rivers are the source of clean irrigation and energy for northern Luzon. The region's mines and tourist spots feed a significant portion of the nation's economy. Our highland farms supply much of the country's demands for high-value crops. The people and diverse cultures have brought honor, pride, joy, and prestige to our country. However, as the region continues to be a significant basin for natural and human resources for the country, most of its towns and provinces have seen a stark lack of progress and development. Many municipalities are among the lowest earning and least productive in the Philippines. The region has the least percentage of paved roads with the mountainous terrain demanding higher costs than the majority of lowland coastal Philippines. Its regional government offices that bring crucial services to the people receive the least funding among all regions. Benefits from these resources have mostly been enjoyed outside the Cordillera, with its people having to strive twice as hard to make the best out of the situation. The Cordillera administrative region is relatively young compared to the other regions in the country. In 1971, when the country was reorganized into 13 regions, by Presidential Decree No. 1, the provinces of Benguet and Mountain Province were included as part of the Region 1 or Ilocos Region, while Kalinga, Payao, and Ifugao were included in Region 2 or the Cagayan Region. Due to national policies that gave priority to population and road development towards regional capital towns, the Mountain Provinces were left behind in development and was used as a resource base. The indigenous people who consider these lands their sacred ancestral domain were seldom consulted on development projects and some felt no choice but to join the insurgency. The Cordillera people have had a long and proud history of resistance against colonial influence. A strong connection to the land has led to culture of environmental preservation and harmony exemplified by the likes of Macleen Dulag and Conrado Balweg. Those who fought and were deemed rebels in the Cordillera had little to no desire to uphold the agenda of the Communist Party. The Cordillera's fight was for the protection of their land, families, and way of life. As the Edsa Revolution changed the national landscape, the rebels led by Conrado Balweg called for a sipat or cessation of hostilities with the Philippine government. Thus, on September 13, 1986, the former rebels from the Cordillera gave up their arms and chose to continue their struggle through peaceful means. It was agreed on that day in Mount Data Hotel in Bauco Mountain Province that the best way to correct years of development neglect that led to insurgency was for the sub-provinces of the former Mountain Province along with the province of Abra to become part of a new autonomous region of the Cordillera. The Cordillera Administrative Region was created by virtue of Executive Order 220 on July 15, 1987 with the following objectives. First, administer the affairs of government in the region. Second, exhilarate the economic and social growth and development of the units of the region. And third, prepare for the establishment of the autonomous region in the Cordillera. Years later, this agreement has yet to be fulfilled. We look onto the current administration to fulfill the Philippine government's commitment to meaningful peace and development by causing the Congress to enact a truly organic act to establish the autonomous region of the Cordillera. <laughs>